Differentials can be a difficult subject for many calculus students. In this video, we're hoping to look at them in a couple of different ways to try to understand a little bit more about what's going on. Let's start out by looking at a picture. Here we have the graph of some function f, <clears throat> and we've drawn the tangent line, which has slope f prime of x is equal to dy dx. And so we've seen before that what we're actually going to do here is just essentially multiply both sides by dx, which is a little bit weird, but <clears throat> the way we think about this is really as dy equals f prime of x dx. And so then these dy and dx are our differentials. Well, where are they when it comes to this picture? Well, I have a picture of the tangent line here, and I'm concerned with some value x, and then I move over just a little bit to x plus h. We've seen this picture a lot of times before. And so what I did here was change the x by a little bit. And so instead of change the x by a little bit, I write dx. And so the dx really means I change the x a little bit. How much did I change it? I changed it by dx. Right? A lot of times, some books will write this as delta x, and that is exactly the same thing in this case. So dx is the same thing as the change in x. Right? Now, what happens in the y direction? Well, if I look at just what happens to this blue line here, the tangent line goes up just a little bit, and how much does it go up? Well, it has some particular slope, right, given by change in y over change in x. And so this dy, we really call the change between where I was on the blue line and where I am now on the blue line. So it doesn't actually give me the change in y, right? The change in y is here from where the function's value was to where the function's value is now. But it approximates the change in y as long as the function is nice enough, I'm zoomed in close enough, and the function looks enough like a line. In this case, I have maybe a pretty big gap in between where the blue line is and where the function is, right? The tangent line and the actual function. And so probably this isn't giving me a very good approximation. But if I zoomed in a little more or made my dx a little bit smaller, then the dy would be a lot closer to my delta y, and so this would be a good approximation. The nice thing about dy is that it's really easy to calculate. All I have to know is the derivative and how much I changed the x. So that's why I like to use the differential to estimate the change in y. Since differentials tell us about what happens when we change the x value just a little bit, one of the most important things that they can tell us about is error. So that means that if I have a little bit of error in my measurement, what happens to the error when I do calculations with that measurement? Let's see an example. Here we have an error problem. The radius of a sphere was measured as 32 inches with a possible error in measurement of 0 0.02 inches. If you use this value for the radius to compute the volume of the sphere, what is the maximum error for the volume? Right? So we're going to approximate the maximum error using differentials. OK, so what do I know? I know that the volume of a sphere is equal to 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed. Right? This is just the equation for the volume of a sphere. Someone has measured the radius of the sphere, and they got that it's 32 inches. <clears throat> and they also know, for some reason or another, that the error in measurement is 0 0.02 inches. So I want to know the error for the volume. That means that if I change the radius just a little bit, right, that would be the change in R, how much does the volume change? Right? So thinking about the picture that we just looked at, what I really want to know is the change in Y for some change in X. Right, so what is dv when I know what dr is? Okay, so let's just differentiate both of these sides using differentials. I get dv is equal to 4 thirds times pi times 3r squared dr. And now I know most of these values. I know what the radius is because someone has measured it for me. And I know what the change in r is because I know that the error could be at most 0 0.02 inches. So in this case, I get that dv is equal to this 3 and this 3 can cancel. 4 times pi times 32 squared times 0 0.02. And if I put this in the calculator, I get that this dv is approximately 2,573.6 cubic inches. Right. So what happened here? I used the biggest possible error 
to get the biggest possible change in volume. And this seems like a really huge change in volume, which is really kind of important, right? If I have a error in measurement, it gets sort of <clears throat> blown up when I try to calculate the volume. So if I want to restrict the change in volume, I need to really restrict this error in measurement here, right? So again, differentials are telling us what happens when I change just a little bit. dr tells me how much I change the radius by, just a little bit, and then dv tells me about how much the volume changes as a result. The idea of a little bit of change is more powerful still than just error. Let's see the same problem again, except from a different perspective. This problem is ex exactly the same as the last one, just in a little bit different wording. How much paint would you need to cover a ball with radius 32 inches if the coat of paint should be 0 0.02 inches thick? <clears throat> So in this case, what I'm asking is, I want to change the radius of the ball. This should be 0 0.02 inches. If I want to change the radius of the ball by 0 0.02 inches by applying 0 0.02 inches of paint to the ball, how much will I change the volume by? This is telling me how much paint will I need, right? The change in volume is the change is how much I added because of the paint, and the change in the radius is this 0 0.02 inches. So I'm really asking exactly the same question. If I know that volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed, then the change in volume will be 4 thirds times pi times 3 r squared dr, right? So it depends on what the radius is and how much I've changed the radius by. So since this is the same problem as the last time, we get the same answer, 2,573.6 cubic inches of paint. Right, so <clears throat> even though this doesn't look like a problem about error, it's still a problem that's telling us something about what happens when I change just a little bit, right? And this is where differentials really come in handy. Try practicing some problems about this, and if you have questions, please post them in the forum. Good luck!